And top of the day is Esther Davis with the Esther Davis Show. The temperature is dropping, but we have a lot of answers for you today. A lot of questions have been coming up the last couple of days, especially about the weather, about the holidays. Thank you for watching our show last week on Christmas and love with the Archbishop. But guess who's here today to get us all straight, to get us back on the right court. Hello, Bishop Joe, Hello, it's our good friend. My praise, peace of God be with you and compliments of a season. Oh, the this, this season is always wonderful. Very. It's, uh, it's a great time. It's the birth of our Lord. Mm -hmm. But let's start. I know we, we want to continue our conversation from last week. We yeah. want to continue Christmas, the real meaning of Christmas. I think let's look at the real meaning of Christmas. Okay. Because everybody okay. get up 25th morning, go to church, come back home. And it's on a Sunday this on year. On a Sunday today, this yeah. year, which is like very, very wonderful, you know. And as they come back home, they eat their rice, do all the stuff, and so on and so forth. Okay. And you know the irony again. Another group is arguing and very strongly. That is not on December 25th. That is true. <laughs> that is, and that's a, another whole big story. Yes. I heard uh, Bishop Errol Roberts mention that uh, that's been that date has been moved around a little bit over the centuries. Yes, but I think the reason, like our leader, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, said something. He said, "Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ was not born on 25th of December mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because if you look at the Middle Middle Eastern Peninsula, one." The weather is too cold. Number two, there's no way the shepherds will be in the bush in winter uh -huh. cold. Uh -huh. Then number three, if you follow the logic of the birth death, John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus Christ. John the Baptist was six months older, older than Jesus Christ. And I, I, I want I want to write about I want to I want you to give me just briefly some history of I'm amazed and intrigued with your educational background. I know you've heard me say that so much, but <laughs> you know, that kind of a background, Bishop, you've been in school all of your life studying. You know, really, Doc, if I must tell you the truth, I uh, was born like this. Let me born. give you a little bit of my okay, background. Okay. When I was 12 years, Jesus Christ came to me in the dream and told me he was physically on earth. And that when the time comes, it to be my duty to tell humanity about him. So based okay. on that, I was receiving spiritual education from very tender age. I wow. learned so much in the, they call it the school of eternal brotherhood. School of eternal, eternal brotherhood. brotherhood. Every mystery about life, why he came, why Adam fell from grace, the purpose of his coming, why he had to demonstrate love by dying on the cross. He mm. could have done it any other way, mm -hmm. but he wanted us to realize that love has no limit. Even yes. at the point of death, you must still continue to love, you know? And so many other things, it made me realize that even the understanding of man on divine realities is a bit skewed because mm -hmm. it has mm -hmm. ego and self embedded in it. <laughs> they have ego, really? <laughs> and you then... said that so quietly, like it's a, uh, it's just no big thing, but it's a huge. Yeah, but it's the truth. It and then the religion, truth. he was the one that made me understand that. What man calls religion? different entities that were sent by God on earth to give different messages to humanity. Humanity misunderstood their message and turned the messengers to become the deity. Okay. Okay, I just had to throw that in. So now we're really talking about Christmas, the love that we should have during Christmas time. I guess there's a very popular, everybody knows who he is now, Bishop Joe. Okay, let's go back to Christmas time, please, sir. Yes. Now, Christmas, you know, if you follow the ancient Roman tradition, remember it was Emperor Constantine of Rome, ancient Rome, that embraced Christianity because his mother was first a Christian. Okay. And according to the ancient European history, he was going to war, the Martian war, and he saw the sign in the evening sky that told him by this sign, conquer. You know, mm. signals, vinces. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm. Based on that sign, he conquered and made it a state religion. That's why the first organized Christendom was called the Roman Universal Church, otherwise known wow. as the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. You know, so having the Roman it, Catholic Church. Yes, that is the word Catholic is universal, Latin. The Roman Catholic Church, the Ro Roman Universal Church, because then the only empire on earth was the Roman Empire. Exactly. So okay. now having made it so, how do they honor the highest deity 
as the way they regard Christ. The, in the Roman pantheon of the gods and goddesses, the highest is Mitra. And Mitra is celebrated in the winter solstice, which falls within that 25th December axis. Mm -hmm. So they switched it. They switched it. Yes. What year are we talking about? <laughs> the talk Roman? We're talking about about 4th century. 4th century. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So, we're talking about the fourth century. We're talking about Christmas. We're getting this history and the connection yes. moving us to where we are today. Am yes. I right about that? Yes. Okay. Over time, they've had so many, you know, changes and arguments, you know, as governments change, mm -hmm. they're naturally bound to be some additions and subtractions, but eventually that source is still holds because okay. one, December 25th is too cold. People wouldn't be tempted to go to do much of outside activities. So why not celebrate it in festivity? And in ancient Rome, that when they had the high debauchery, the high drunkenness, so many negative right. things take place among them. But now, having put it now on the Christ okay. as a symbol, now it boils down to now humanity has to come down to celebrate God in the right way. Like my father, Lido Lumbo Lumbo Bu, said that in December 4th, 25th, 1945, he put on suit, tie, and shoes for the first and the last <laughs> time in his life. Really? First and last time, yes. 1945? 45, December 25th. Mm. And his reason being that he said it was the day humanity decided to acknowledge God who came to redeem them. So in honor of that great sacrifice of Christ, mm -hmm. he joined humanity to acknowledge the day. It may not be the birthday, but since we've but agreed the day. for that day, it is a day worth cherishing. And we're happy with that. Very comfortable. It's, it's the meaning behind the thing, the cause. Mm -hmm. A child was born. Yes. In Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. So let's, can we just keep, and that's the reason for the season. <laughs> that's really the reason for the season. Like you said in Luke chapter two, when the angels went to the shepherds and told them, unto you this day in the city of David is born Christ, the king. You know, Hosanna in the highest and peace and goodwill towards me. If I read it from the Bible, Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. 10 and 11. Yes. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So not right. to, to the shepherds, but to all humanity. Say, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. All people. Yes. All right. That includes all people, all religions. All people, all re Hindu. All neighbors, all Buddhist, Hindu. Chinese, Japanese, Shinto, Jain, Zoroastrian, Confucian, Sikh, Christian, animist, traditionalist, all everyone, all people. And you know, John 3.16 was very clear with that. Say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But you know, most of the time we mix, mix up the belief with showing faith in the church, Sunday, Sunday, now. We believing, mix up the belief with, yeah. with what, rage Show, and showing fear? Showing faith. Let's, uh, let us okay. mm -hmm. let, 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 let us go to the church so that they will say we came to worship. <laughs> But that's about right. I mean, it's it is it's you make it sound so funny, but people go to church because okay, it's Sunday, it's the mm -hmm. Sabbath, I need to go to church. And as soon as they walk out, just like that. But yeah. actually, the belief he's talking about is when you believe in something, mm. like look at the American military, for instance. They tell you, even in the battlefield, they have one philosophy: let's do it for our country, because our country wants us to. And if you remember what John Fitzgerald Kennedy said, mm -hmm. say, do not think about what you can do for what America can do for you. Think about what you what can yes. do for America. So the same thing, if you coming to the faith in Christ, believing, Paul said, but if you have faith without works, it's meaningless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you believe, you must accompany your belief with action, the practical Christianity. I think you ought to say that again, because your faith needs to have some action. Yes. Oof, we don't get that right. Because a lot of people, we take the scripture, the Bible, as a literature. 
It's literature. That, yeah, but the reality is that it's the only book. Leader Olumba Olumba Obu said the Bible is the constitution of God for man. Mm -hmm. In the mm -hmm. pages is contained every step you will take, every action you can take, every move you can make wow. to qualify for the grace of God and have peace among humanity. Faith without work is dead. Our guest, of course, is the Archbishop from uh, the Brotherhood. Love that word, Brotherhood of the Cross, cross and, and star. star. And this is holiday season. We can't get through the holiday without talking to him about what is <laughs> so what are we supposed to be doing. And then right behind Christmas is mm -hmm. New Year. New Year. Okay, uh, give me a correlation. Very big one. We said it from January. Everybody had big plans this year. I'm drink, I used to drink before I ain't gonna drink no more. I used to do A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. We take resolutions before the 5th of January, the resolutions, the resolutions are in the trash can. Good. <laughs> now you, you, have, trash can. Yeah, you have 11 months mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to experiment whatever you resolve to do. Then Christmas, just a week interval. You have, it is brought to our consciousness the manifestation of the greatest entity to walk the earth. Who came and he did not use knife, gun, jets, bombers, whatever, but he conquered humanity. Like Lord Nelson in his poems wrote, he never commanded an army, mm -hmm. he never captained a fleet in the sea, right. he never ruled over any nation, he didn't leave any big family like Solomon and David, but of all the men and women of note that ever walked the earth, none impacted like the man of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ. He used yes. a simple life love, practical. Living it, he lived it by teaching. He had the capacity to be a, a, the richest man on earth, if mm -hmm. he can, mm -hmm. with five loaves of bread and two fishes, feed 5,000 men. If you add the women and children, you could be talking about 50,000 people at a sitting. So he could right. have made any amount of wealth he wanted, but he was so hungry that he had to even go and look for corn from somebody's farm to eat. Wow. 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 Bishop Joe is talking to us about giving back, yes. taking your faith, mm -hmm. and moving your faith forward. That's a good subject. That's a big subject. Yes. And in John chapter 14, verse 34, he said it in a very clean, simple What is the uh, Bible verse again? The gospel according to St. John, Saint chapter John. 13 from okay. verse 34 and 35. It was very clear, defining to us the type of love he wants us to put in practice. He said, <laughs> a new commandment I, I give, give unto you, you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. You see the condition? He's mm -hmm. not giving mm -hmm. us a theory okay. to imagine. He's giving us a way of life, a roadmap. He has walked himself as I have loved you, that ye also love one another said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. A disciple is a faithful follower. A faithful. Yes. Okay. And okay. you're following the footprint, footsteps of your master. Say, if you have love one for another. So it's not a case of, hey, I love you. Like he said, so if, if somebody comes, he's hungry, say, go, God bless you. God fill your stomach, mm -hmm. all is well. Mm -hmm. But right in your kitchen, food is overflowing and the man is hungry. No. Well, that makes me think about the this Christmas and what's happening at our borders. Yeah. And this is in the United States. They're happening other borders, I'm sure. But we have people to feed and we have people to clothe. So where's your faith? Well, you see, it's more, where is your practice of faith? Oh, okay. Okay. You practice. know, because we're asking the correlation between Christmas and New Year. Okay. Now, before I come to the border, eh? By the time you come to the realization you're celebrating the life of a man who had his, who signed his death warrant from the day he was born. Did you have a bench warrant? <laughs> death, death, death warrant. A, 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 yeah, he had a death warrant. Yeah, a Palestinian mm -hmm. friend mm -hmm. of mine mm -hmm. told me, say, hey, Joseph, that your Jesus really had a death wish. He, was, he had the audacity to challenge the institution, the legal institution, the Paul, everybody, and he was willing to lay down his life. Now, when you're going into the new year, eh, what should be the resolution of individuals, families, mm -hmm. governments? Make the world a little better. We have that opportunity now, Bishop. Yes. Opportunity. Very big one. All those people at the border, 
they did not run because they don't want to stay at home. An yeah. African parable said that the rabbit does not run in the daylight for no reason. There must be something after it. The rabbit? Yes. There's a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a hunter. Yes, a hunter. Or a child. Or, 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 an honey, or maybe a prey. A yes. predator yes. that is about to devour it. Maybe a snake entered the hole or a coyote or whatever, one animal or the other. So the rabbit is not used to bright light. It moves in the dark. It's a nocturnal creature, you know? You know, that's right. A rabbit is not used to bright light. Yes, it's not used to bright light. It's a nocturnal creature. So running out in the daylight, when the light is so bright, something is pursuing the rabbit. So all these people that left their homeland, Honduras, Guatemala, Paraguay, Uruguay, all the areas, and even from Africa, from Asia, and so on. All over the, all over all the over world. The world. They left farmlands. They left families. And they left they everything. everything because they're running for their lives. So all they needed is just a little kindness to bring back to them mm -hmm. the consciousness mm -hmm. that humanity still exists. We're talking about the border, but it's all part of our Christmas program. Christmas is not about gifts and parking your car or where to park at the mall. Mm -hmm. Let's think about some of the atrocities that are happening in the middle of this goodwill season. And that's what we're talking about. Now, last week we talked about with the um, with the Emmanuel. with the twin was there. <laughs> Bishop Emmanuel. <laughs> Hello, Bishop Emmanuel. Wherever you are, we're talking about you. But you brought up the subject of of how people should really honor this day, and and that is a paramount issue because we've got Christmas on a Sunday this year. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about going to church? What about going to worship? What about uh, service? What about feeding the hungry? You know, in Matthew 25 from verse 31, Jesus Christ gave a very classic example of the true demonstration. He even used it to qualify the judgment day. He said, in that great day, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, say, he shall gather all men mm -hmm. and shall separate them the sheep on the right, the goat on the left. Now, what is the qualification that he called one group sheep and the other one's goats? <laughs> Goat is, is known for disobedience. Okay. Sheep okay. is known for obedience and humility. Okay. Yeah. So he said the sheep on the right, come, ye that is beloved of my father, come and receive that which has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Say, because I was hungry. You gave me food to eat. I was naked. You clothed me. Right. I was sick and in prison. You visited me. I was destitute, homeless. You gave me a home. I was in need. You met my need. Then they ask him a question. Say, Lord, when did we see you in those conditions and did those things to you you're talking about? Because I ain't never seen nobody that looked like you called Jesus. You know, he said. So he was challenged. Yes. They tell them, he told them that, look, in as much as you've done this to the least fortunate of my brethren, mm -hmm. you have done the same to me. Telling us that if we're looking for Jesus to give a Lamborghini or for Jesus to give a loaf of bread <laughs> or for Jesus to give a pair of shoes, look at that hobo you met by the roadside as you're walking into the shopping mall. Look at that child that is crying with tears, streaking down the face with the mud caking because he has not washed the face for one week at the border. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look at that one that is sleeping under the cotton as you drive along the road in your luxury with your air conditioner giving you warmth, you know, in the vehicle. Each of them, in each of them is the Christ. You don't need to look up to the wow. sky. Look at those. You find Jesus. You find the Christ in every one of them. That is a great parable because we see a Christ every day. Yes. I asked a group of people not too long ago, okay, if you pass, put $10 in your car and $1 bills. So when you pass by a corner, just hand out a hundred, a $1 bill. And I'm so amazed at how people react to that. <laughs> a dollar bill. No, I'm serious. I mean, a dollar bill. And they have such a reaction, like it just made my day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a lover of animals, of course. And you, you get the feeling that you've done something powerful mm -hmm. just with a dollar. Yeah, but it means a lot. A sister gave me a testimony. She will forgive me for using her testimony, but it was touching. Mm. Today, she's a medical doctor. She's doing well. So while she was in school, 
at the point things were so rough she had to be searching for every dime every quarter every mm -hmm. cent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was not even up to a dollar and she wanted to buy oatmeal and bread <laughs> she wanted to buy a loaf of bread and oatmeal oh oatmeal bread. hoping that she can get a dollar maybe 50 cents for ah, the bread okay. 50 cents for the oats what country were you in i have to she keep was up in with granada you. i have to keep up with you because you, you go all over the world <laughs> when you start talking <laughs> so now so when she got to the shop and she was just arranging the pet the, the cents the quarters and yeah the man stood that on the shop started laughing say my daughter please take the bread take the oat keep your coins <laughs> she said she will never forget that experience to the man is nothing but to her it meant the world so what you and i throw away yes it's a treasure somebody's to somebody lifeline, else lifeline a treasure yes. so the season we are celebrating we call it season of we're celebrating the birth of a savior like he said in that gospel according to saint luke unto you is born in the city of david christ the king mm -hmm. and it's for all people you know and then in isaiah chapter 9 remember he said verse 6 say unto us a child is born you gave that to us last week yes unto us a son is given and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father the prince of peace and to us a, a child, child is, is born. born and to us a son is given so it's not just a child but it's a very special child a child that has potentials mm -hmm. a child that has the power to give what we do not say look let me even read it he said for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder so it's not just any type of a child Mm. but he is the ruler so for you even to benefit is that what it means the government should be up on his shoulder yes you can only carry the load when it's your responsibility so the responsibility of rulership is upon him okay so for you to benefit from his government he has told you the qualification true for you if, if you want to work in any institution in america or in any part of the world first thing they ask you is your credentials when you present your curriculum vitae, mm -hmm. they look at it. Okay, yeah, this means it meets our specifications in this caliber of stuff we are looking for, you know? So yes. we, have, we can pick him or her to fill that slot. So the same thing, he is one, he's not just coming as a child, but he is coming as the ruler. So the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, <laughs> Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the prince of peace the prince of, of peace. peace he said of but, you know we all can be a prince of peace but he said christ has made us christ. kings and queens unto okay. god his father revelations chapter 1 verse 6. oh my favorite the revelations yes he said i has made us unto us kings and princes unto god his father because he can because he said of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end the young lady that was trying to pay for the bread. Yes. You mentioned she's now a doctor. Medical doctor. A medical doctor. A pediatrician. What kind of a nutrition? Eh? What is she again? A pediatrician. A pediatrician. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's working with babies. Yes. And that made her today very humane. And children and her parents relate with her because having been exposed to the life of a, of lacking mm, mm -hmm. it develops a well of compassion in the man yes because it's a school of life it's not punishment it's a graduating institute she had to go through that school so that when she comes into her element in her profession you will what see a her. beautiful thing to say yes you call it the life of lack yes but you you're telling us that there's a as a channel you go through yes in every no man who did not pass through that channel that can ever achieve that is why our lord jesus christ came he denied himself of everything at birth he showed the example mm -hmm. he was the prince of peace the mighty god the everlasting father but he chose to be born among animals in a manger would you call that a life of lack yes okay in the school of life in the school of life yes. oh, okay that's that's what it is mm -hmm. you chose to go among animals mm -hmm. you can relate with them even from birth 
He did not choose the nobility, the priesthood. He chose a simple carpenter to foster him, Joseph. He chose a simple temple virgin, Mary, to be his mother. Mm -hmm. He started with life of nothing, learning carpentry work with his father in the workshop, living as a nobody, whereas he is everything put together. And when the hour wow. came for his glory, today Christ is the head of every table and the silent listener to every conversation. Hold that point. We're taking a little bit of a break. My guest is, of course, the Archbishop Joe. And we're talking about the birth of Jesus. We're learning some new things and we're learning about what happens with the life of lack and how it becomes a life of prosper. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Joe, about the Yuletide season, about what we want to do during this uh, this great season. And the new year, of course, it all comes with Christmas and a new year. We were talking about the, uh, the young pediatrician mm -hmm. that, as you put it so eloquently, going through the life of lack, and that is an intentional channel. Yeah, it makes a better humanity. Yes. And then once you get there, you have a passion. Yes, you can understand people's pain. And if you look at in this life, I've made it a point to understand that. Mm. Many children of the super rich, they may excel in everything, but they have one gross deficiency, many of them. Not all of them. Okay, a they, gross, gross deficiency. Yes, they lack humanity. Oh, yeah, I think we see a lot of that. That's with the hatred, yes. I would think, that would come with hatred. Mm -hmm. But you're telling us that if you go through the life of lack, you have a better appreciation. And that's true. That's yeah. very, very true. And all the great leaders, our Lord Jesus Christ chose that life. He said he made himself poor that we might be rich. Even the Buddha, you know, he was born a super, into a super rich family. He was a prince of a very wealthy oh, really? Maharaja. Yeah, Gautama Siddhartha, the Buddha. He was so well favored that everything about his life was pampering. But on the day, one day he was going along the road, according to the history, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he saw somebody by the roadside begging. He never believed any human being would lack. He saw a corpse. He saw, you know, so many things. He was asking the servants, are these humans like me? He said, yes. And I said, but I never knew life could be like this. So are these I, humans like, like me? me because yeah. they were animals or something? No, because he never saw human he beings never suffering. Saw that, oh. His life had been life of pleasure, yes, okay. life of privilege, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was what made him leave his father's palace to seek for the meaning of life outside opulence and luxury. And his findings led to the establishment of Buddhism. I have not ever heard that story before, <laughs> and that's why you're such in, you're so intriguing when you come on the show. That is a deep part of history. Yes, Buddhists. Buddhists. Yes. Are Buddhists related to monks? That's the monks. The monks are the followers, the, the like the priests in Buddhist order. 
and not not the not the, in the Catholic system they have the monks too mm. that belong to different orders, Ignatian orders and Franciscan orders and so on okay. and so forth. Okay. But these Buddhist monks too, they are people who have brought themselves into a life of servitude, the life of denial. Yes, yeah. You know, because that is the principle that was laid down by the founder. And See, that's that's centuries old. That faith is what centuries? Centuries old. Men even long, long before the manif- advent of the Christ. And you know the irony of it, that you know the word Buddha is not his name. His real name was Siddhartha Gautama. The Buddha is in the Tell light. Us, the Lord, you can't take me that fast. You know? His name was Siddhartha, Siddhartha Gautama. G A U T A M A Gautama. Mm-hmm. The Buddha is when you become enlightened. So they okay. called him okay. Gautama Buddha. Gautama, the enlightened one. He has learned the lessons of life and has woken his deeper consciousness to learn how to relate with God and man and understand the existence. Amazing. Yes. Uh, there were, I saw a picture of Marx in one of the demonstrations that we had on international television. And they haven't changed their dress at all. They haven't changed <laughs> anything all these centuries. They are just the faithful. Yes. And you know what they're teaching humanity? All these things, they don't make you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, clothes don't make the man. I thought that's okay, why they okay. say the, the hood mm-hmm. does not make the monk. Mm, mm. It is the man, you know? It's the man, yes. The man. That's why they tell you when you want to check, if you want to correct the world, look at yourself. Change look yourself. In the mirror. It look begins in the mirror. with you. Oh, oh, Bishop. <laughs> I say, getting ready for the holiday, the new year. Now these, I can hear the revolutions now coming. I'm going to do better in the new year. <laughs> I'm going to uh, help more people. I'm mm-hmm. going to. But what exactly are you going to be? How many sacrifices are you going to make? That's the question. But life is supposed to be, like he said in the scriptures, sufficient unto a day mm-hmm. is the evil thereof. Every day has its own challenge. Oh my gosh, yes. We, and we wake up and we don't know what that challenge is mm-hmm. actually going to be. Yes. But the thing is, every day too is an oppor- a privilege mm. and an opportunity to be better. How do you prepare for the unexpected? You can never prepare for anything. Yes, that's why it said in Hebrews chapter 11, I think Hebrews, I, you haven't cha- done that one. Mm-hmm. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, 11. From verse 1 to 3. I'll just read those three. Yeah, that is how you prepare for every day. He said, now, faith is the substance of things mm-hmm. hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, you understand that the world we are formed by the word of God. There's no logic. There's no analysis. There's no preparation. There's no preparation, but faith leads you to accept. So, so that the things which are seen, we are not made of things which do appear. And in verse 6, he put it very clearly. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that God is, mm-hmm. and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. They must believe. You must believe. So when you believe that, as you wake up in the day, tell your I said the day is going good. First, oh, that's hard to do. I know you, you make that sound so easy. But, like, but, fish, but first do this, people do that? Is, look, is, that a, is, is that a magical button? It's not. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians. Yes, chapter 5. It has very, very, very good message. Say from verse 15. I'll read it uh, just 15 to 18. It said, See that no render evil unto evil. For ev- unto every man. Okay. Don't revenge. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. I had this experience when I had a major surgery in New Delhi. Mm-hmm. I was in deep pain. That was one of the most my- mystical experiences I've ever had in life. The pain was so intense, and I heard the voice that used to direct me from childhood. Tell me, go to the balcony, look on the electric wire. There was a little sparrow perched on it. Say, listen to that bird. It will Uh, give you a message that will sustain your life. The little bird was going to give you a message. Yes. And as I listened, the bird was singing. I heard it like a human voice. It said, life is a moment song of joy. 
life is a moment song of joy song of was the joy. bird was the little bird singing it was singing ah he said she told me cherish every moment and you have the secret yes. of life whether it is ah. good or bad that is why i said here number two say re one rejoice evermore number two pray without ceasing do not relent yes, in your prayer no matter the situation you face no matter the challenge that you'll encounter don't relent don't relent then finally say in everything give thanks for this is the will of god in christ jesus concerning you that has been so difficult for uh for me to do mm. uh, for a lot of people it's, it's been very very difficult but i think of the scripture i do know the scripture and if you live with it every day, but sometimes you get wayward, you know, you can't. <laughs> As you say, now that is the truth. <laughs> that is the truth. And if you remember, there's this one young white young lady that sang her song, Christy Lane, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Yeah. So yeah. that's all I'm asking from you. Lord, give me the strength to do every day what mm. I have to do. That yesterday is gone. Tomorrow may never be mine. Because what you have is now. So yeah. you pray it for the strength to do and take life one day at a time. One day at a time. Yes. Sweet because, Jesus. Yes. A lot of people plan, oh, January, I'm going to be a millionaire. I will invest in cryptocurrency. Uh, I'll invest in Bank of America. <laughs> I will buy this. I'll go to Africa. We don't know what they're going to see the 1st of January. Mm -hmm. That's why Christ yeah, We gave, do an awful lot of planning. Mm -hmm. um, our lives weeks days years in advance cruises mm -hmm. daily not... weekly monthly yearly yeah, planning yeah but the question remember the story of a rich young fool <laughs> <laughs> we have some rich old fools too <laughs> no, that no, still no. have carry that same mm, but christ used the young one he said yeah, the okay. farm yielded so much he mm. had excess then he told me so rejoice i have enough grapes they will process wine store them in the vats they'll process everything there's going to be party every day now he said that night the reaper came to him and told him thou fool tonight your soul is desired from thee we're talking about the holidays and we're talking about <laughs> new year's but we're also talking about life getting you through life because you can't plan the day just be thankful for every, every day moment every pray moment without ceasing. ceasing so what are you going to do christmas day already Christmas Day, just every day is Christmas. Every day is Christmas. Yes. And, you know, Christmas is not even, it's supposed to be even more of a melancholic day than celebration. Really? That was the, I mean. That, oh, okay, that was the original intent. You're right. Yes. We, we commercialize. Yes. Because when you look at the Christmas, who are you celebrating? At the prime of life, 33 and a half years, that's when every young man is at the peak of achieving his vision. Hmm and dream right okay marry beautiful woman have a good apartment you know live the best life go to honeymoon cruise around the world you know yeah. but this one now at that point he was heading to his grave and it was comfortable he said look hey on that tree on that hill i'll be crucified between two thieves mm -hmm. for your sake for your sake so it is supposed to be a day now we'll take stock all my years on earth, I've been here 20 years, 30 years, 40, 50, 70, whatever. Have I really been able to measure if I'm put on the scale, if the judgment is going to happen today, mm -hmm. will I make his presence? I'm not talking about going to heaven anyway, but let's look at the immediate. Let's look at the immediate. Yes. Am I, what, 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 what can I give account? There's a song that said, what shall I say on that day? when the righteous shall be revealed. And he told us that nobody knows the hour, not the day. No. So that no. Christmas day is supposed to be okay, a point of reflection. Master, where have I strayed? Guide my steps. How am I going to fit in? Will I, am, I a be, am I a better person than I was last year? <laughs> Will I become a better person tomorrow? Even if you give me two more days or two more years or 20 years. Am I a better person? Am I, will I become a better person? The day you shall make the roll call, hey, come back home, judgment is on. Will I be found worthy? But mm -hmm. we go, that is the good day they will remember the girl they've not seen for the past 20 years. That's the day they will remember to drink the wine they've kept in the vat for 40 years, chilling. That's the day they remember all the negative things that Christ 
mm -hmm. did not represent. You know, you, you do make us think. I mean, you make us think, am I better this year? We'll say I'm going to be better, but you're telling us to say, okay, let's switch that around. Mm -hmm. Am I better now than I was last yes. year? Yes, because everything you know better will like to push everything ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, procrastinating. We love doing that. Gee, you said that magic word, huh? Procrastinating. <laughs> <laughs> said that magic word, procrastination, is uh, something we don't think very much about, but you don't know if you're going to be here. Mm -hmm. But you know the reason, eh? No, human beings, we are sensual creatures. We want to take care, you know, have fun, feel good enjoy the moment mm -hmm. but the question is whether we like it or not we must come to face the reality because there's one thing steve jobs said in his bed that he had everything money can buy but they cannot help him so if and we've, had, we've seen that over the years um i think howard hughes was one of the richest men in, at one time mm -hmm. and he had something a lot of theories about that but nobody could help him. Yes. That's just amazing because we think we have everything if we have money. Money, the poorest man on earth is the man, the man of wealth. <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody is saying, oh, I hey. love this man. He comes on the show with all of these <laughs> things that he says and then people start repeating. But that's the, that's the essence of the show. The show is uh, to get us into turning back to God. And you told us at the very, very first, because if we don't, we are going to destroy mm -hmm. ourselves. Yes. I remember that. Of course. because And if you look at the situation we face, the principle of wealth, you know the secret of wealth? No, what is it? Avarice, gathering and keeping. Gathering and keeping. Yes. The secret of wealth, gathering and, and keeping. Okay. But the real wealthy man, that's why I've never heard when anywhere it's written in this life that blessed is the hand that receives it. No. <laughs> he said, blessed is the hand that gives it. Yes, yes. Because in giving, yes. any day you go, if you like, be a billionaire, be a trillionaire. I remember Onassis, Aristotle Onassis yes. in the 70s and the yes. 80s. Yes. Upon all his wealth, what happened? Look at Neverland Ranch of Michael Jackson just a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. It's now a place that is unkempt. Everything has gone. Mobutu Seseku in Nigeria, they call, they call himself in Zanga Mbanda, the leopard. That's in Nigeria. In, no, in Congo. In Congo. Okay. The dictator that ruled for over 30 years that killed his uh, superior, Patrice Lumumba, mm -hmm. and then took over. He ended up dying in a strange land in Morocco, in Rabat. And he was buried in the stranger's grave. But in his mansion in Badolite, in Congo, has every precious stone, gold, diamond, because Congo has it a lot. And today, Guadalete is more or less a derelict. Then what does Ooh. it benefit? Yes, these are verifiable facts. They can Google it. That's to make us know well, that. Well, that's basically what Neverland is like today, mm -hmm. uh, the Michael Jackson estate. Yes. And these, uh, Bishop, that is just, well, that's the answer right there. You cannot, it's the hand of the giving. Yes. That excels. Because that's what lives on the memory. The poor, poor woman, oh God, I never knew that my children were going to celebrate this Christmas. And look at today, we have food, we mm -hmm. have this. Mm -hmm. God bless my brother. He's heard in the throne of God. Wow. But the money in the bank, all you kept the money is for others to use. They'll be giving them out as loans, as facilities. It's in your name on paper. But other people are enjoying your world. <laughs> <laughs> we always have fun with the bishop when he comes because he has this way of designing things. Uh, these leaders around the world for centuries. This is not just something that comes and goes. Okay. It has been happening. Mm -hmm. They have their picture on the money, but they can't spend they the money. They can't spend the money. They can't spend the money. At all. If I tell you what is happening in so many countries, like back in my home country mm -hmm. today, suddenly the government decided to change the color of a currency. The color of a currency? Yes. They what is the currency in Nigeria? It's called Naira. Naira. Yeah. Okay. They have the 1,000 note, 500 note, 200 note. Now, a lot of people hoarded it in their homes. According to the, the governor of a central mm -hmm. bank, 
he said three quarters of the money is lying outside the bank in people's homes and vaults. Now they've changed it. You see pictures online of trucks, huge trucks loaded with cash, rotting away. They are bringing it out from all the places. They bury them because they, they, by 31st of January, they cease to become legal tender. So they go back to become ordinary pieces of wood from which the paper was processed. They changed the color of the money. That's so. Well, that's sort of related to what has happened to us this past week with the FTs. FTX. FTX. Yeah. Because that money is no good. And the gentleman that started this whole thing mm -hmm. uh, is being extradited back to the United States. That's a lot of money. Yeah. But whatever they do, even if they jail him, the ones who have been made wretched and poor remain where they are. That's yeah. why the law, it said the law brings death. But love brings life. And that love is what Christmas life. is all about. Celebrating love, demonstrating love, practicing love. Yeah. Show love to your neighbor. You have three cups of rice. You cannot finish the tree. Share one cup to your neighbor. You have a huge chicken. Send one leg and one wing to your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Let but, there be but, love. Yeah, let there be love. And even with uh, our concern in Texas uh, from people that live that are religious, and we need to share this Christmas with our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. on the border. Whether you like it or not, I don't care how many are coming across the border. They probably have the numbers wrong anyway, but that's not even an issue. Just feed them. That is freedom. Let them celebrate. Yes. Let them join you. When they hear the song Feliz Navidad, Prospero and know you fell is it that they will join you in singing it with joy. You know what? We always run into this problem. We're gonna take one day for four hours just so we can get <laughs> maybe we can get everything done. Uh, my outstanding guest going into the holiday season has been Archbishop Joe. And your last name, your name is Joseph Pronounce it. D K D I K E. I I see that all the time, but I uh, also mess it up every D -K -D -I -K -E. time. D I K E. They, you no, know, here they try to call it Dyke, but it's pronounced as <laughs> it's spelled D I K E. D I K E. D K. D K. Yeah. You know what? We want you to have a great holiday. <clears throat> Merry Merry Christmas. Jesus is the reason for the season. Uh, I will be back with Bishop Joe and with Bishop Emmanuel next week. We have the boxers coming. It's Esther Davis. Happy holidays. You are the greatest audience in the world. We'll see you next time. Right. <laughs>